What's going on everybody? Welcome to Geared Up. This is our weekly live broadcast where we talk about lighting, techniques, gear, photography, anything you want to talk about, hopefully pertaining to lighting, because that's what we do at Photo. Today, we're going to expand on what we talked about a couple weeks ago with our one easy, or we did two easy one light headshot setups. So things that I like to use, uh, things that look really, really good, at least to me, we're gonna take some of those and we're going to expand on them a little bit. Uh, add another light into it, see how that looks, see how that changes the way uh, the light falls onto your subject, and see if it's something that you would add in. Uh, the cool thing about once you start playing with multiple lights, you can add a little bit more dimension to your subject, which is always really, really fun. Uh, with that being said, let's just talk about, we'll go ahead and talk about the gear that we're gonna use, uh, and then we'll start taking some photos and see what it's all about. So uh, for my, uh, I have two different, for each headshot setup, there's gonna be kind of two fill lights, or um, Let's just talk about the first one first. So the first one will be a, uh, uh, the fill light will be a the three by four that we did. So in the first one, we took the we took the three by four, put it right behind me and shot it forward and it kind of gave this really pretty window light look. We'll take that photo again so you can see it. But then what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull that power back a little bit on it, use it just as a subtle fill. And then we're gonna use the Octobox as our key light coming in from the side, kind of like a, in a loop light setup. Uh, something that look really, really nice to keep it the contrast down a little bit looks really cool. And then we have this little setup right here, which is an A2 overhead. And we're going to kind of use this as a little bit of a... Oh, they can't see it. Oh, they can't see it. Okay. Oh. It's nowhere, but you'll see it. It's right. Oh, there's my A2 right there. You can, okay. see. You can kind of see it. It just kind of matches okay. the ceiling. So, uh, but we're going to use this A2 here through a large umbrella. It's going to kind of give a nice hair light, shoulder light. It'll it'll bring a little bit of light to the, the top of the face, but the, the light we're going to kick around just like we did uh, with the other shot where it was kind of on the light stand and we had like the uh, reflector underneath it, like cl that clamshell style light. We're gonna bring that around to more of a butterfly light and you're gonna see how nice that light can kind of cascade all together. And then we'll probably throw a reflector in there just to bring down some of the contrast from underneath. But that being said, let's dive into it. Oh, the actual lights that we're using for it. Again, the fill light with the three by four is an R5 three by four. That'll be a Pro 11. You don't have to use a Pro 11. I just have one, so I'm using it. Uh, then for the main light that we're going to use for all of them is a B10 through an OCF three foot octa. And then again, that overhead light is an A2 through a large umbrella. So cool stuff. Um, ask questions while we're moving all this stuff around. We'll talk. Let's have fun. Nothing too terribly intense. Again, this is, uh, these are really, really simple light setups. Nothing too, um, too overly complicated. Uh, again, I like to... I don't know how much they can actually see this in the wide. Oh, they can see where I'm at right now. So um, whenever I'm setting up this, this light right here that I use as kind of that window style light, uh, I like to uh, keep it pretty high. So uh, especially since we're shooting headshots anyway, and uh, we're gonna be standing for these headshots, I like to keep it up a little bit more. That way there's less of me blocking the light. Uh, if this was my four by six, I would care a lot less, but I would still have it up. Uh, but this kind of keeps that light coming down, which I like. So this is gonna be that fill light uh, for the single shot, and then we're gonna bring in this three foot OCF Octa as our main. And so what I'll do again is I will take a photo here uh, in like just a second of Kate, so you can see what it looks like with just the softbox, the original shot, and then we'll add, uh, we'll make the adjustments and it'll look awesome. So. Let's Jim says, Jim in Texas says, no hat today. No hat today, Jim. No hat hair today. Looks pretty good. So yeah, the hair, the hair's on point, so I'm, I'm not having to hide my, my, uh, my Brillo pad of a head. So. Hi everybody. Oh my gosh, there's people from all over the place. Some days. Oh, and someone said it's freezing in London. Uh, I feel bad for you because it feels awesome here in, in Atlanta. So. Um, Unpredictable. Yeah, but we're unpredictable. It'll probably be, it'll probably be freezing next week. Yeah, so, exactly. so cool. So let's make sure that's a standby on that overhead light, right? Yes. Okay, cool. So we're going to turn off that overhead light, turn off the main, and kick on just this light behind me. Yep. Just double checking the test. Come on. Feel free to pop in questions, and I will keep my head over here and. There we go. There we go. Now we're live. So, so here we go, Kate. 
So, um, yeah, that's perfect. So, the original shot that we did uh, is just this light right behind me, and here is what that light looked like. Here we go, okay, three, two, one. Actually, come a touch closer. There we go. And then kind of settle back into place. There we go. Three, two, one. So it's a really, really pretty shot. Again, it looks like an, a nice, even, oh, it'll pop up in a second. A nice, even window light, kind of natural light looking. Uh, it's something that I love, especially if I'm trying to go quick and dirty. Um, it's a really flattering light. So if someone, you may be shooting someone with um, skin imperfections or something like that, this is a really, really good way of taking that light and wrapping it everywhere. You can't see it, but it's a big soft box behind this. Yeah, yeah, it's that big three by four you saw me messing with. It's, just, uh, it's directly behind my head. So now let's pull that power back. So this is where we're going to wind up. So I'll show you what that fill, the fill light's going to look like, and then we'll bring in the main. So here we go. Three, two, one. So we pulled the power. Oh, you weird blank. Let's Come on. Come back. Here we go. Three, two, one. So we pulled the light back a stop and a half uh, and caught Kate in an awesome blink. So, but this is kind of how the fill is gonna be. So it's, it's obviously underexposed. It's what we want. We don't want it to be too overly contrasty. So when we go here and we kick on this main light, here we go, three, two, one. It's this really beautiful, even light. But the cool thing about it now is because, because we have this, uh, again, we have this nice subtle fill. So if you come back right here, okay. Uh, so we have this nice subtle fill. So all of this light right here that you can't see, but it's right there. Uh, actually, here, let's just do this. Sorry. Yeah. I just wanna make sure you guys can see how it's set up without stuff creeping in. There we go, it's cool. So you have all of this light from right here kind of flooding Kate and keeping the contrast down here on the side of the space, especially if she's kind of bringing her nose to the main light. Uh, what I would say do for someone, when you're coaching someone in their headshots, uh, a lot of people part their hair on, the, on, on their good side. So like they'll part their hair and they'll point their face kind of like this, this is their good side. So if you're trying to short light, then just remember that, kind of pay attention to the part, put the nose on the opposite side because they're, you're gonna wanna point their nose to the light. So this is, Kate's good side, she, all of her sides are good as far as I'm concerned, but uh, so what we did is we set the octobox to the side that I'm gonna have her nose going to. So it's the nice short light, it's got a nice slimming effect to it, uh, it adds a little bit of dimension. Really, really easy way to take that first lighting setup and just morph it a little bit to give it a touch more direction, but it's still a big soft light source and it looks really nice. Does anybody have any questions about anything? I'm trying to see right now. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, hey, from Atlanta. Oh, Atlanta now. What's up, ATL? So. Um, are you using a new-ish air controller? So I am using the Connect Pro. I am uh, an absolute fanatic about the Connect Pro. Uh, it's, it was one of the things that I was waiting for forever for us to update. Uh, and now that it's here, it's better than I thought it was going to be. Uh, it's better than I could have imagined it was gonna be, and so I use it nonstop. I love it. It's, it's such a great remote between, um, between the speed of like firmware updates and seeing your power setting on top of your camera uh, and all of that kind of stuff, and, and just the controllability and actually having all six groups. It's, I mean, I love, I love it. I have, it's in my bag all the time, no matter what. Uh, right, I have it and a Connect in my bag. My Connect is my backup. Uh, but yes, I am using the Connect Pro. I love this thing. Um, I, did you say the, the settings for the flashes? Oh, I didn't say the settings for the flashes. So uh, luckily the remote remembers what I was doing. But um, so when we were setting up here, Kate, come back to kind of where you were. You are about right there. So the backlight, this light that was behind my back before I moved it, probably eight feet from you. Eight feet from me. So probably about eight feet from Kate. I'm using, uh, camera-wise, just so you know, a GFX 100S. Uh, Fuji films, the medium format. Uh, it is with a 110 millimeter lens, which works out to about 85 millimeters. Uh, F8, uh, 125th of a second, which is the fastest shutter speed on this before you go into high speed sync, and ISO of 100. So that's what we're doing on camera settings. Now, power wise, this light that was eight feet away 
uh, was at a power level uh, on the first shot that was more that window light shot. That was a power level of six and a half. We brought that power down to five. And then that was the fill light for the shot that's on the screen now. And the uh, main light that was hitting Kate is at eight. So. TTL? Uh, no, this was all manual mode. Uh, you could use TTL to set it up. Uh, but whenever I'm, at least for me, whenever I'm building lighting setups, I like to work in manual, but like if I'm building multi-light setups, I like to work in manual mode and I always like to set my fill light first. So like I, I don't meter my stuff as much as I probably could, uh, but I just kind of get the feel for what the vibe I'm going for. So like I'll play with kind of the look and feel of my fill light before I bring in my main light. So that's why I was showing you um, whenever I turned that. So I was showing you this shot right here. So showing you that shot right there, that would be how my process would go. So I would take that photo of just the fill light first, and then I would bring in my main light to make sure that the ratios were where I want them to be, just off of the vibe. See, I think I missed one. Um, cool. Why do you have all three lights in one area? So I have all the three lights in one area because I'm showing you this stuff, but this light was off. Um, and then you're gonna see, so r right now, the way that this light was set up, again, uh, was me here, with that soft box behind my back and then this coming at Kate from about a 45. So more of a loop light style. So now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna bring this light around to more of a butterfly style. So it's gonna go right under my lens. It's a, uh, is it in my shot? It's slightly in my shot. So I'm gonna raise it up just a skosh. So now it's more of a butterfly style light. So it's, um, it's gonna come down and hit Kate pretty even on the face. Uh, it's a really, really good light setup for someone who has like, uh, really defined uh, like cheekbones and stuff like that because it's really gonna kind of carve them up. Kate has really good cheekbones, so we're gonna check that out. But then <laughs> the overhead light is gonna give this really cool cascading light uh, from the top of her hair, like a hair light down to the shoulders uh, and kind of separate her from the background. We'll take both photos so that you can see what it looks like with and without, just so you can see how it changes the look up. But again, uh, and also I have a reflector that I'm going to bring into at one point because the original shot that we did a couple weeks ago was a butter uh, was a more of a clamshell style where the light was here and we had a reflector. So I'm gonna bring that reflector back in, take that shot too, so you can see when it, it's gonna raise that contrast up a little bit. So let's take some photos. So we're gonna turn off that fill light there so it doesn't infiltrate. Luckily for me, I remember to do that today. So Let's turn off everything and I'm gonna show you what the overhead light looks like. So it's an A2 at a power level of nine and a half. Uh, it's, it's at that power level just based off of my camera settings and stuff like that. The fact that it's bouncing into an umbrella and then coming back down through a diffusion panel, which is eating up some light there. So we're at 9.5 with this. So here we go. So back this up just a skosh. There we go. I have my my softbox creeping in just a little bit. I think I need to raise it up just a touch. I see one more question. Oh, uh, yeah, sure. Um, how would you use a light meter to get the correct settings for your different flash devices? So for me, so like with the pro photo stuff, the, the light meters don't have, um, don't have, uh, our air built inside of it. So like you can't click the button on the side of the meter, but for me, I, prefer it the way that I'm going to talk about. So I'll take the Connect Pro off the top of my camera and I have it in one hand and my meter in the other hand and I'll just meter and I'll make the adjustments on my power rate for my Connect. So that's how I do it. Uh, and again, I would still build my fill first. That's just the way I like to work. So build my fill first and then I'll add my, my main in. So here we go. Here's the overhead light only, power level nine and a half. Oh. Could you shimmy too, yeah, too much shimmy, but that's fine. There we go, perfect. And then settle in. Perfect. I am, still have my light, hold on a second. I still have my light creeping in the shot a little bit more so. I think uh, we changed our, there we go, that should be fine. Here we go, three, two, one. So that's the overhead light, just so you can see that. Um, again, it's just going to give this nice cascading light over the hair, the shoulders, a little separation from the background. It looks really, really cool. So that's 
the overhead light. It's kind of set in a way that it's not really uh, creeping into uh, onto her face. Um, I would move it a little more forward, but I have these overhead lights in the way, so. Cool, so now I'm gonna turn that off and then turn on the main. And so you can see what the main just looks like by itself. So it's still at a power level of eight because I haven't really moved the light distance from Kate. All I've done is swung it around. So it should still look proper on the exposure. Three, two, one. So great exposure and it's a lovely light. So, um, cool, let's get you centered back up, perfect. Now, so that's the shot with Kate without the hair light and now see what this second light does to kind of once again, separate Kate from the background, add a little more dimension. It's a really, really easy way to kind of zhuzh up your light. Three, two, one. It's really, really nice. Uh, again, uh, the system when it goes through shows a little con more contrasty than it actually is. If you could see it on the screen of my uh, computer, it is quite, yeah, it's not nearly as contrasty as you see, uh, but again, Really, really subtle. And then, so just for funsies though, let's add in a reflector. So. Hey everybody. Let's see. Hopefully, is, any, is anybody gonna be at WPPI? Cause I'll be there for like a day and a half. I fly out here soon. So, uh, should be fun. So cool. Let's see, two questions. Um, when the fill is directly behind you, do you typically need to worry about glasses? So someone's asking if you have to worry about glasses with the fill behind. Uh, I mean, you do. Um, you do. Uh, it, it's it's one of those things that I would I would pick and choose uh, how you would or what technique you would use. That's why I'm kind of giving you some options. Um, if someone's if you're using uh, you're photographing someone with glasses, you might want to broad light them. So like so like when I took the first photo of Kate, right? the light was here and I cheated her nose to the light and you guys were where the camera is, that's gonna short light them. So what I would do is I would broad light them. So if they're still gonna point their nose this way, bring the light in from this side, right? So now you have more light hitting from this way and that reflection is gonna shoot off in the other direction. It's not gonna hit your camera. So broad light them. Uh, it's gonna change the way the light looks a little bit, uh, but if uh, if they have a narrow face, the broad light looks really, really good. If someone with a rounder face like me, I have kind of a melon head, uh, broad light just kind of makes my head look more melony. So you have to, you just have to walk the line of, of what it is you want. Uh, hopefully their glasses have somewhat of an uh, anti-reflective coating on it, so that it helps minimize it some, so cool. For glasses, keep the bottom edge of the modifier above the glasses line. That's good. Thanks, Brett. It's a good tip, Brett. Thanks. Um, Brian had one more question. Also, how do you feel about multiple catch lights? They don't bother me. Multiple catch lights don't bother me at all. I mean, if you look out in the world, if you think about walking around in the world in general, light reflects off of tons of stuff. So like you could be, the sun could be over there, uh, kind of low in the sky and you're going to get this round catch light, but it could also be hitting this white box truck that you're walking past and you're going to get this big square of a box truck catch light in your eyes. So naturally it's not, um, it's not anything that bothers us walking around in daily life. So it's, I don't think it's that big of a deal um, in the photography thing. Uh, but again, to each their own, you know, there's no right or wrong answer, just what I like and, and whatnot. Let's see, let's see. Cool, let's, let's take a shot really fast with the reflector. See if you have any more questions. If not, we'll sign out. So um, now we're gonna take the shot with the reflector. I'm going to Kind of hold this in here. No, I got it. You don't have to do it. <laughs> I, I'm doing this with my hands anyway. I could just kind of. I'm just trying to make sure I don't creep into the shot. There we go. Here we go. Ready? So here comes a shot with the reflector. Three, two, one. And that'll help raise. Oh, looks nice. So that'll help raise some of that contrast from underneath. Lovely. Very, very yeah, cool. I actually really like that. And so, cool. again, really, really easy ways to. Um, take head, headshot light, and, and there's a lot of other different ways. We're gonna explore all kinds of stuff. I wanna, um, I kinda just wanna give out some ideas for like people who are looking for maybe new ways of shaking up their stuff. I shot headshots a certain way for a long time in New York. Uh, we'll talk about that um, coming up and, and as we expand to like a three light headshot setup, which would be super fun. But uh, yeah, so just real quick, let's do a recap. Let's pull up the images so you can, we can all see. Um, Michelle was asking, uh, is there a proper way 
to store collapsible reflectors, is there a better uh, uh, or fold? It's easier just to fold them up. Uh, what, did I even, really weird, but, yeah. what did I even do? Oh, there it is. I was like, what did I even do with my grab collapsible reflector? Uh, folding up is easy. If you just um, if you just fold them like, uh, yeah, this way. Uh, nope, this is fine. Cool. Cool. Here we go. So if you just take the reflector and you kind of pop it into a taco, it automatically wants to start folding on itself. So taco it and then spin it and you're done. Oh, yeah. You make that look easy. And then, um, and then you're ready to rock and roll. Pop it in its bag. Like all the pro photo ones, Come in like a really uh, a pretty a pretty nice carry case. The inside's kind of soft, uh, so you don't have to worry about like rubbing uh, up against like a a thick material. But yeah, so it's, again, uh, for for collapsing, just taco it, taco it, and spin it. That's it. Taco to the taco spin. And spin. Yeah, taco and spin. Um, everybody likes tacos. Uh, it is Tuesday. It is Tuesday. So Taco Tuesday. Congratulations, everyone. You made me figure out what I'm eating for lunch today. Um, so, I lost my train of thought. Okay, we're talking about the lights. We're talking about tacos, we're, we're talking about tacos and they always make me lose my train of thought. So again, so the first photo, uh, let's go full screen so this is easier to look at. Cool, so the first photos that you see here are of the first setup, again, I really, really like this setup here on the left as far as a, a nice, uh, for anyone who's like, I really don't like the way that flash looks, this is a really, really good option here because again, it's mimicking what a window does. So again, raising that big three by four up, if you can get even bigger, if you can go four by six, my four by six is my favorite way of using this, uh, doing this technique, but the three by four does a good job. So uh, big rectangle, a long way, uh, it goes out as opposed to up. So really long, raised up high, so you, you know, it's just kind of your head blocking it. And that big wall of light just looks like a window. But then again, we dropped it down a half of a stop, and then we added in the three foot octa coming in from this side right here, her, uh, her left side. And again, just add some dimension, add some direction. Really, really beautiful light. It looks good against the background. She's not fading into it. It looks really nice. So great headshot setup from one light to two lights. Then again, one more time, let's go to these three. And actually there's a fourth one with the reflector in, so we're gonna talk about all of them. So what we did here is we, we took a, a, a traditional butterfly style light. So the light is right over the top of the camera. You could do this with a beauty dish, you could do it with a three foot octa, you could do it with an umbrella, it doesn't really matter. It's just to, to get that butterfly style light, you want the light right over the top of the camera, right? So a butterfly style light right over the top of the camera, looks really, really nice. Then we used an umbrella overhead to give us this really nice, uh, just gentle highlight on the shoulders and the hair. And you can see that here in this third shot when they're all combined. And then we brought in that white reflector from underneath just to bring some of this contrast. You can see here in the neckline versus here in the neckline, how that white reflector just kind of raises that contrast just a little bit, keeps it looking nice and subtle. It's a beautiful headshot light setup. So granted, there's a million ways to skin a cat, right? So you can take, there's all kinds of two light setup things that you can do for Headshots, these are just some simple ones that you can use if you're trying to maybe mix it up a little bit. Really cool setups. Anything from anybody? So is the lighting impacted by the lights that have been on behind the main light so, for the videos? Yeah, so generally whenever uh, for the lives, you're always gonna hear me using the same settings on my camera when we're inside. And that's usually F8 ISO of, uh, 100, or ISO of 100 and 125th of a second. That's because those settings delete these lights. So uh, what I like to be doing more, and we have in the past done some stuff where we're shooting a little more wide open, maybe we need to, maybe we need to let more light into it. And what we'll do is we'll actually dim these lights for those. But for the most part, uh, a lot of the stuff I have my camera set to where these video lights don't um, intrude on the actual lighting of Kate. Um, Jim's asking, how about an extra large umbrella for a film? Extra large umbrella for a fill would be fantastic. Um, even better, uh, again, I just like, the reason I go with the rectangle is because it, it gives that window light look. Uh, but that doesn't mean you have to go that route. You can go with a big, a big round fill. That would look, it would look lovely. It's just more of a, um, you know, certain soft boxes and stuff like that and modifiers are made to replicate certain things. 
rectangular soft boxes and, and square soft boxes are made to replicate window light and door or light coming through a doorway. And so if that's the light you're going for, that's generally why I tend to choose that modifier. But a big XL umbrella I've used many a time for fill looks beautiful. How do you um, decide which light modifiers to use? So today it was pretty easy. Uh, I'm changing out a lot of my inventory stuff, so some stuff's going back to Profoto. Oh, you, uh, some stuff's going back to, to Profoto to 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 refresh for me, so because I beat my stuff up. Um, so right now I don't have a lot of stuff, but no, the, my modifier <laughs> selection, my modifier selection that that was my that was my silly answer. My real answer is um, again when it comes to the rectangle, my modifier selection was there again, like I was just talking about. I'm trying to replicate window light for my fill. Uh, this is also I want. I want to replicate the window light for fill too for people who may not have two lights, but you still want to get this look. You can use your window as the fill. You could just turn kind of your setup to put the window right behind you and then bring in your fill light. So it's not about owning two lights. It's about giving you real world options for doing this with as little as you may need or it, with what you have. You know, I don't want Again, I don't want people having more gear than what they actually use. It's, uh, it just takes up space. You could ask me, it takes up all my space. Um, so rectangular for that window light. That's why I went that direction. I like, in, in the world of portraits, I like round modifier catch lights. Uh, that round shape because of the sun is just something evolutionarily that we have grown to um, gravitate to because it looks natural in the eye. So that's, Octoboxes for me, when it comes to like pointing the light at the person, I really love octoboxes, so I generally go that route. And then umbrella was just a nice move uh, because one, it's in, I, because I'm bouncing into the umbrella, it's indirect, so it's going to allow the light to be a lot more even across the shoulder shoulders. Of so whereas if it was more of a shoot through umbrella, there's more of a chance of a hot spot, especially because the umbrella is up high. And, and obviously Kate's head's higher than her shoulders. So that light would there'd be more uh, of a chance of being a hot spot up here than there would be on the shoulders, where it is when we, with bouncing up and then running through a layer of diffusion, we're able to even that light out from top to bottom. Um, okay, and then we have a couple. Um, so Joey's asking, what umbrella do you use for like six to 12 people, whole body shot? Where do you position the modifier if you're trying to get the whole body? So someone's asking six to 12 people group shots, what umbrella would you use? If you could only bring one modifier, extra large, the biggest umbrella you could bring because you're gonna have to back it up. Um, when it comes to taking groups of large, or group shots of, uh, when it comes to taking large group shots of people, I almost say group shots of large people. Uh, it doesn't matter <laughs> what, what, their what their size is. Um, when it comes to taking large group shots of people, you're gonna wanna start, I think one of the, if you don't have multiple lights, one of the things that people start to kind of get into is they try to like position like a light right here and like off to the side. And the problem is, is this person's gonna be well lit and this person in the group is not gonna be well lit. So the best thing to do for large groups of people, if you have one light, get the biggest umbrella you can get. So for us, it'd be the XL, it'd be a 65 inch umbrella. Um, I would take that, I would put it dead center and I would back it up. Uh, back it up as far as you can back it up that your flash can handle the output to get that in, that light back to your subjects. Uh, that's gonna give you the best result this, and, and the easiest result with one light. Um, I noticed that your space is white, gray, and black. Would a oh wooden God. floor alter the white balance? Uh, wood floors can absolutely alter white balance. I, I, I'm lucked out, I have a concrete floor, which is, pr I mean, honestly, my concrete floor is a little dirty so it, um, and, and by dirty, I mean like it's kind of stained from like years of other things. So it's kind of got a dirt feel to it. Uh, hopefully that's an awesome explanation for what the floor is. It's not perfect. It's not perfectly gray. It's got like brown. Yeah, yeah. We clean it, but it is just is what it is. So yeah, the gray, like the neutrals help. Uh, depending on the color of floor, 100% could absolutely, the, the color of your walls. You know, if, you're, if your studio is red, the chance star is probably gonna reflect back red. So um, we try to keep everything relatively neutral here in the studio. Uh, the, the best case scenario is that your studio is painted black top to bottom, right? Because then you don't have any weird reflections of anything. Uh, but then someone walks in and they're like, you know, what kind of dungeon have you just brought me to? So it's, you have to weigh your options to like, do you give off dungeon vibes 
or are you okay with a little bit of light color correction? Something to think about. Do you know if Profoto will have a booth at WPPI? Profoto will not have a booth at WPPI. So you can find, uh, like, I, I think my boy Cliff is at, he's either at B&H or Adorama. I'm not 100% sure. Um, and then we might have, like, another spot with, like, Sammy's, and then we might have another spot with, um, with another, I, I'm not sure all that, honestly, I haven't gotten there yet, so I, I don't, I don't know all the dealers who are there yet, but uh, you'll find Profoto hanging out with uh, respective dealers. That's where we'll be, but we don't have a dedicated booth. Awesome. We have so many questions. Might have to pop in later and just kind of. Cool. Yeah. If you have, if you guys, if I didn't get a chance to answer your questions, feel free to DM me. Uh, we can talk about it. Uh, I'm pretty open when it comes to that kind of stuff. I'll be traveling, so I probably won't have much to do while I'm on an airplane for a couple hours anyway. So um, shoot me. A message we'll talk about it thank you all so much for all the engagement this has been super fun again really really easy two light headshot setups all with soft light. Oh, the, one other thing i want to mention really fast i generally tend to shoot all my headshots with soft light uh shooting headshots with hard light is something that you can do but you need to one special like you need to take a lot of shots and specialize in it but you also need to make sure that like one either you really love retouching because hard light is going to emphasize imperfections in the skin uh or just that becomes your look and people come for that look so i generally tend when it comes to headshots gravitate towards more of a softer thing it's a lot more forgiving especially when you're super analytical about your face which headshots are it helps. So with that being said, I hope you all have an awesome rest of your week. If I see you at WPPI, find me. Uh, you know, I, I've been having awesome hair days here recently, so I haven't been wearing a hat as often. But look for the hat. Don't look for the hat. Uh, just look for the weird guy. You'll probably find me. Um, with that being said, have an awesome rest of your week. See you, everybody. Peace out.